All right, Aftershocks TV. Man, I love doing these kinds of episodes where we feature a burgeoning underground band like my guest is from today. And if you haven't heard of them yet, you will right now. We've got from Stoner Groove Metal Upstarts to Red Mountain. we got vocalist Dave joining us here on Aftershocks. Dave, what's going on, man? How are you today, bro? I'm here, man. Uh, kind of worn out from a show last night, but that's that's what we do. So sure, loving man. it, man. Yeah, well, why don't you go ahead and talk about the show? Uh, what you said it was in, in Alabama, Huntsville. You were, we were talking about this right before we came on here. It's a, a place we really love to play called Maggie Myers Irish Pub. Uh, okay. It's kind of a small venue, but, you know, we love those intimate things so much. So it was a, it was a good show, man. The, the crowd was actually great. It was a punk slash metal show last night. So we had okay. different kinds of music going on, you know. Sure. Three bands. Oh, wow. Very cool. Okay. Well, very good, man. Well, you know, uh, Dave, man, you know, um, now since you guys, you know, the Red Mountain, I mean, you guys are, I guess with these days they consider uh, a new band. I mean, you guys have been around for a little bit, but obviously usually these days, if you haven't been around for like 10 years or more, they could, everyone considers someone a new band, a quote unquote new band. Right. Um, and sure. from, you know, the, the very little I do, I, you know, I was able to kind of learn about your guys' background, which is very, very little. Um, I know you guys it did say you guys formed uh, at a friend's basement some years ago. I mean, sort of yeah. like a, the way it used to be done. That's how a lot of bands used to form. But I'll let you go ahead and, and just just give us, I guess, uh, you know, just a little bit of, uh, you know, of the band's background in terms of how you guys formed. I mean, were you guys, um, you know, I obviously, would you guys know each other previous to this? Did you play in previous bands together? Just go ahead and talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so uh, all four of us, man, we definitely go way back. Um, Adam and I, the drummer, uh, we used to play in a band together called Tyburn about 15 years ago. Uh, and then Cody and Goff, the guitarist and bassist, they had a band. They've actually had a couple of bands together, and they've grown up together. You know, they're almost like brothers. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, we were in the circuits together for a long time and then all of us took a lot of time off of music adam even joined the uh, air force and okay. moved overseas to germany for years uh goff and cody were just kind of not doing things for a while working jobs i was doing the same thing uh, i had a band called bush hog suicide back in the mid 2000s okay. that used to do like uh, southeastern regional type touring um and i went for a long time too not playing any music at all man and just so happened uh, around 2015 i think it was i had moved back to corinth because i had moved away for a little bit to uh, salt lake city okay and when i came back uh we just crossed paths again and uh goff and cody hit me up and were like hey you know we're looking for a singer we're trying to start a band up and uh, they were actually jamming with a friend of mine who had a pretty cool little setup down in his basement at his house. Mm -hmm. And um, they were like, hey, you know, just come over and let's just see what happens, you know, because we all knew each other and we had jammed, you know, in previous bands and been to each other's shows, you know. So we were familiar kind of with the styles of each other. And we went over, man, and that very first night, uh, we jammed, of course, with a different drummer because uh, it was at his house. Uh, but it was Cody and Goff and I. And that night we came up with bits and pieces of what became Cosmic Guns, okay. one of our songs now. Mm -hmm. And from there on, man, it was just uh, we just kept going. And we went through like, I think, five or six different drummers total. Mm before adam came back into the picture and he actually was living in uh one of the dakotas i think it was south dakota i think okay but uh he had moved back stateside 
And he kept saying, you know, we would stay in touch, of course, all the time. And he'd be like, man, I want to play music. I really miss it. And we're like, move back down here, you know, move, move back to the South. And uh, he did. And uh, he he joined the band, man. And it that's when it really meshed. Like, we we did a lot of writing with some of the other drummers, but it just didn't happen until mm-hmm. till we came together with him. So okay. that's a very brief summary of shoot i guess it's been seven years now wow okay yeah very cool man yeah. well yeah i mean and, and you guys like you said you're in the south you're based out of the magnolia state there in mississippi yeah um you know historically you know historically not really a, a place that a lot of people typically think of when, when they think of metal i mean i know Jesus, probably the, the biggest band out of there probably is three doors down i believe right they're pretty much the heaviest you know rock yeah band. uh they they're one uh of course uh saving able is semi from corinth uh, okay. i grew up with uh jason and jared um and then the uh most of the rest of their band is not from this area but i think they kind of consider uh corinth a uh, home base too so yeah those two bands uh there's probably more but metal which all of us in this band have been playing metal since we were kids this isn't the greatest place to play metal you know like Mm -hmm. it's a very bible belt place you know very conservative uh but there are a lot of metal heads around here you know it's just they're scattered and the scenes have kind of died off especially since uh back when adam and i used to jam in our old bands um it's it's kind of died off but you know we're just we're plugging away man we're doing our thing trying to trying to keep it going so yeah very cool well let's go ahead and let's dig uh our teeth here into this uh, impressive very impressive debut record you guys uh have put cool. out called alpha uh i mean just you know the the one thing that stands out to me on the record is just you know there's a bunch of really great hooks on, on this record i mean obviously uh, the song you mentioned before, Cosmic Guns, has got that. Um, yeah. You know, Sith, The Color of Greed. Those, to me, those three tracks just really have those catchy hooks. And, and like, you know, I, li- I like to say it has that stay in power. It's one of those things where you kind of, you're singing those songs. After you hear them, it's, it still sticks in your head. You're still kind of singing them, and it just doesn't go away, which is always the sign of a really good hook. And it's just one of those things when, you know, you can have great music, but if you don't got those hooks that connects the listener to the band, man, it's really just, it, you know, it just doesn't connect the, way, the same way that when you really have those strong, you know, uh, choruses and those just those riffs that really just hook the listener in. So I guess kind of give us a little bit of a rundown on the recording of Alpha. I mean, was this sort of, I mean, was this songs that you guys had, you know, I mean, you were mentioning earlier, obviously Cosmic Guns was one of the first songs that kind of, you know, clicked with you guys when you guys started jamming. Did you guys, have you been working on these songs since you guys formed? Was this sort of a pandemic thing like a lot of bands have put out? Just go ahead and talk about the record a little bit, you guys. Um, Well, real quick, I'll just throw in, you know, some of the backstory for a few of these songs. They were being put together uh, pre-Adam. But as I mentioned earlier, you know, they didn't really just click and hit until Mm. he joined the band, you know, and then. I don't know, man. It was just like the glue that we needed. So there's that, man. And if Adam wants to speak some on the recording and all that, you know, that'd be cool, man. Yeah, I mean, it. as far as how the song's going to go, I mean, those those guys did a lot of their a lot of a lot of the groundwork you know before us I, I sort of linked up with them um and then when the album started coming together is really when we had just a whole good collection of songs man and like you're talking about hooks and this and that and like really i mean at at the end of the day that's kind of just what it comes down to for us it's just like playing writing stuff that's enjoyable man like it's fun to play it's fun to listen to and then like it got to the point where you know we had all these songs and like all right it's time to take this to the studio it's something we always wanted to do but you know you gotta you gotta make sure it's right make sure the place is right the time is right all those sorts of things so and it it turned out to be a, a far exceeding our expectations, man. It was it was yeah. it was something else. Ba- Babs, man, uh, over there, Babylon Sound, dude. He, dude knows his shit, man. 
definitely shout out to him as well. So yeah, Memphis, Tennessee is where we uh, recorded it. Greetings, my friend. We are all interested in the future, for that is where you and I are going to spend the rest of our lives. The rest of our lives. The rest of our lives. And remember, my friend, future events such as these will affect you in the future. Let's talk about your guys sound you know it's um to me it's just a real great blend of, of metal and hard rock i mean for the most part obviously it's got the you know mid-tempo it's got the <clears> crunchy <throat> riffs and you know i guess like i said if you're going to compare it to any sort of genres you know it's it's got the it's got some stoner elements in there some grunge a lot of groove metal obviously which and in, my, in my opinion i mean it's a sound that really reminds me of a lot of stuff that came out really in like the early 90s and I'm starting. I'm starting to really hear this sound coming out of really all these different regions here in the United States. I mean, there's a couple of bands uh, northeast that I've discovered that have this sound. Damn your eyes and incognito theory. I mean, there's just a bunch. And to me personally, it's one of my favorite styles of metal, if not my favorite. I love just the mid tempo, groovy stuff. You know, that comes from obviously emanates from bands like Pantera and so forth. But I mean, what sound did you really? Did you guys set out to? I guess to extract when <clears> you really started getting, you know, writing and getting to the studio. I mean, was it really intentional to put together a sound that you have now, or is this just kind of what happened when you guys kind of got together and jammed and then just, did it just kind of come out this way? I mean, talk about that a little bit. 
Um, I I would say it's a fluid thing mostly. Um, that this is just my opinion. You know, we they've been works in progress for a while. Um, quite a few of them we had played live way before we tracked anything. And so we, you know, we would work out the kinks live sometimes and change things, you know, it, Mm. it's kind of evolved the whole time. So I wouldn't personally say we set out to sound like anything, man. In fact, I, I, sometimes I listen to our songs and I'm like, damn, each one kind of just sounds different (laughs) from all the rest in their Mm -hmm. own way. You know, Mm -hmm. So that's my opinion. Uh, What would you say, Adam? Yeah. I mean, pretty, pretty much just that, like I said, everybody, brings their own influences to the table you know and and has and styles and it's not you know when we write something there's 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 a whole lot of like stuff thrown out on the table stuff taken off the table yeah oh this here and there throughout the whole process and so a lot of it is just you know we we're feeling a certain vibe for this one song, you know, maybe we'll, we just jam out something in, in our practice spot, you know, and like, we're just feeling this vibe and then certain things come together and be like, all right, like that'll be like kind of one of those types of songs, you know? And then like another night, you know, maybe we're kind of just full of piss and vinegar, you know what I mean? And like, we jam the fuck out and one night we're like, Oh shit. You know, like that's badass too. And so it's, it's, it's hard to say, you know, we definitely didn't go, number one is what we didn't want to do is go in there and say, Oh, we want to do this kind of record. It has to be way. It has to be this genre, whatever, you know, it's like you said, you know, you you play what you enjoy and we write what you want to hear or whatever. And so that's pretty much all this was as far as the creativity side of it musically. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Well, and let's talk about, you know, um, the, the track and the video you guys have for the song Cosmic Guns, uh, which is kind of fitting, like you said, since that's really the first song that you guys kind of came together, uh, came together for the band. Um, it's It's got that groovy, you know, kind of stoner vibe to it. Um, like I said, I mean, vocally, you know, vocally, uh, Dave, you know, I, I love when bands, you know, have the clean vocals, but during certain parts of the song, they get going with the, the harsher growls and, and sort of stuff. And you, you've got that obviously on this song and a lot of songs on the record. And, you know, I think what's really great about your approach is, you know, you don't want to overdo it either. I mean, I think that's something that, um, you know, is important when, you know, putting together these kind of tracks. I mean, you really know from listening just not only to, the, to you know, the song Cosmic Guns, but really to the whole record. I, I you really know how to balance really both of those styles well. You know, like you, you use the aggressive approach really where it needs to be and really where it fits instead of just kind of putting it all over the place. And uh, you know, to, to me is really you know one of the things I think that stands out. So is that something that you're aware of when you're approaching you know y- your vocals on the songs? I mean, talk I guess about you know as a vocalist how you go about approaching when to kind of get aggressive, when to maybe scale it back, and just sort of your approach when you're. Uh, writing songs um yeah it, for me man it's it's literally the moment i um a lot of ways that i kind of write is uh will jam and i'll mostly just have syllables and almost humming or just yelling you know no words uh the words kind of come after we've been working at it a little bit so but the I don't know. I just, uh, I go, I go by the vibe, man, the energy that's in the song. And sometimes, you know, I feel like a a clean vocal is necessary. And obviously uh, I've played heavy, heavy music in the past a lot, but with this, you know, band, I definitely have the freedom to sing here and there. And I appreciate that. So I don't know, man, uh, that's kind of a tough question because you, you really just go by the vibe, you know, and, and the other three members are very important in that, you know, like if they're playing just this nastiest riff beat song ever, you know, you're not going to probably sing like an angel, (laughs) you know? Sure. So, um, Goff is very good at, uh, mixing in emotion in his riffs and Cody's got a great groove, you know, uh, with the bass stuff. He's also a guitar player, by the way. Uh, so he's he's really good at, at 
mixing things with uh, Gof. And of course, Adam is great at, at pulling it all together, but Adam's also great at like throwing out ideas for riffs and stuff. So, you know, we all work together and it's their energies too that help me figure out where to go vocally. Awesome. Okay. Well, now, you know, uh, you guys, you know, you re referred to something before in terms of really playing live, you know, locally there uh, in Mississippi. Um, so, I mean, what like you were saying is it's it's tough there. There's not a huge scene as you were kind of talking about uh, in, in that particular, I guess, area in, Cor in Corinth. But in terms of where you guys, like you said, you played in, in Huntsville last night. Um, where I guess, you know, the thing about you guys is you kind of located pretty central to a lot of places you can yeah. kind of play, which is really cool. I mean, you got Nashville doesn't seem like it's that far away. Uh, you're semi close, I guess, to New Orleans. But, you know, I guess it's not that far where you can make it. Um, so what's your, what's your guys' strategy when it comes to playing shows? Is it mostly, you know, within, like you said, you're, you're a particular area? Are, are you able to go up into Tennessee and down to, you know, Louisiana, all parts of that region to play? I mean, what's your, kind of your guys' approach to getting your music out there to the metal fans in that region? You want oh, this one, Adam? <laughs> yeah. I, I, you sort of, I guess, in a way, you just sort of mushroom out. You know, you, you, you build your solid... You, we hop over to Memphis. Memphis and Huntsville are probably our two closest, you know, big, bigger towns venue-wise, you know, to play. Uh, there's closer ones, but they just don't have anything going on. Um, but yeah, I mean, we we've done over over the years now. I mean, we've we've played several shows in Memphis, several shows in Huntsville, uh, a few in Tupelo that we can, that we can. Um, mm -hmm. And then as far as yeah, that's pretty much our, our mainstays as far as our area goes. Now, of course, we played a lot of other shows far off, you know, but the idea is to try to just sort of mushroom out. You know, you build a strong base somewhere and then you try to get it bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, we uh, the more we play out in Huntsville, you know, you try to we went to Chattanooga one time. And so you you go that way, too. And now we're uh, this year. I think we're going to try to get up towards Nashville ways because we haven't played there yet. Um. But, you know, that's just one of those other things. You just sort of push the envelope, push the mm. your territory outwards, you know, slowly as, as, as people, you know, want you to. Obviously, you can't just dive off into somewhere no one's heard of you before. It's probably not going to be very successful, you know, but mm -hmm. just just sort of grow in that that region that, that we're in, I guess you could say. Yeah. Well, no, and I think that's actually, you know, it's kind of funny. I actually, I, I, and you're right. I think some sometimes a lot of bands these days try to, you know, they just want to get into maybe a van or something and just go, you know, to a different, you know, coast or part of the of the country where no one knows them. But as you mentioned, yeah, if, if you haven't played it before, you're not going to get maybe the, the best turnout unless you're opening for a bigger band. And, and like I was saying, you know, to, these days, I really think that's the way, you know, it's got to go back to basics like that. Like you said, you slowly mushroom out. You, you you do you know your the, the cities within you know hour two hours with within your reach your uh, location and like you said slowly but surely branch your way out so I think that's you know really the way to go and a great approach and one yeah, of the places you know sorry go ahead yeah. no I was just gonna say uh, as as true man especially with expensive as things are these mm -hmm. days too like you kind of have to you know go back to the roots you know what I mean and yep. like start out that way and and a lot of band. <laughs> it seems there's this huge focus now to towards everything being digital and all that. And that's cool. But we also still have that philosophy of playing shows live, man. Like yes. music is meant to be played live, you know, 100%. and that's, that, that's, you know, when it, that's our bread and butter, you know, we can do studio stuff. We can do videos and like cool albums, you know, and shit like that. But man, live is our bread and butter. That's, that's where it is, man. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I agree with you. I agree with you guys. You said you're right. I think because of the of the digital, you know, we've got this digital um, scene online for a lot of music. Some people, I think, just get, you know, or some bands get a little comfortable just pushing everything online. Like you said, they don't really focus on the live show aspect unless it's really within maybe their immediate local, um, you know, city, town, or whatever it is. And so, um, yeah, I agree with you. I think playing live, that's what it all comes down mm -hmm. to. Because like you said, especially this music, metal, I mean, it's meant to be played live. Yeah. No doubt.
Exactly. <laughs> There's a billion people out there who can make a metal record today, you mm -hmm. know. But can you go play that? Can exactly. you bring that in, that real energy to someone face to face? Most of them, no. Uh, so that this is what we live for, man. We the live stuff is where it's always at. Well, <clears throat> I'm glad to hear that that there are still bands doing that. <laughs> Instead yeah. of, like you said, just being online bands, like you said, and putting records together in their bedroom, you know, it's, yeah, it's, I mean, yeah. it's cool in its own way, you know, yeah. we're glad you downloaded that app and did that, but you know, I want to see it, man. I want to experience it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, in one place you guys uh, did play recently, it was the Tennessee Metal Devastation uh, Music Festival. I know, um, I was I was able to listen to some of the other bands too that uh, were on that show, and there's really I mean some really solid, just like your guys yourselves. I mean, really some really great underground bands uh, yeah. that are coming out of uh, that region right there. Um, so talk about that festival, how playing that was, and really how how I guess an important event like that really was in terms of bringing together a bunch of underground metal bands from your area to sort of connect in one place. I mean, how cool and important was that for you guys? So I'll, I'll say this, man, like grow, growing up in this area, being in metal bands and stuff going way back when, like, first of all, something like that happening was like a dream come true, man. Like mm -hmm. I could have never imagined, you know, a big ass, uh, you know, of course, maybe, you know, you got people that want to throw some kind of a festival together and, but, 
you don't expect much, right? You show up, you're thinking, okay, you know, there'll probably be like 30 folks here or whatever. Man, this was like the craziest, biggest, nice. most awesome freaking experience, man. Especially for this area, you know, going this, like, you know, you guys probably talked about before I came here, like this whole area used to be teaming with bands, man, and used to be all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. And those people are still there. They're, they're still out there, you know, so the fans and the demand is certainly still there. And that festival proved it. And that was, that was, phenomenal. yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, and, and, it, and to me, that's really how, you know, scenes and movements, you know, start. I mean, like for instance, there, you know, out here on the West coast in Las Vegas, there's a guy, this guy named John Gist, who's doing really the same thing as Dax, Zach's doing, uh, mostly for the stoner and doom scene. Um, and, you know, and, and like I said, that's really how you, you, you get to build scenes. I guess we were just kind of referring to before, having to start from that that roots, that grassroots sort of movement where it starts locally. And it's all about, you know, the, the, the bands coming together and having festivals like the Tennessee Metal Devastation Festival. Knowing that something like that, if that happens every year, that's just going to gin up even more excitement and, and really just, you know, give, I guess, more reason to for metal fans to pick up instruments and start bands and create more of a scene. And so it really yeah. seems like that's what's kind of going on down there, which is really cool because, you yeah. know, it's um, I really just think that's how that stuff germinates and becomes, you know, really a, an actual scene. And that's what we're missing these days is physical scenes, not like we were talking about the virtual scenes only yeah. that we see. So, yeah. well, now for you guys now, um, are you guys not planning on putting out any more, I guess, you know videos or any, any you know pushing any more tracks off the record because there's one one particular track on there you know sith which i think is one of the songs that everyone needs to hear out there it's another just catchy groovy great chorus um anything you guys are planning on doing uh, or are you guys going to start now writing uh for the next record or what, what's your guys focus right now going forward well I don't want to give away too much, but yeah, we, we do have some things planned, but we're, we're trying to figure out uh, the logistics of it. Mm -hmm. um, but we're also, we're also uh, kind of taking these holiday times to write some new stuff. Um, but we're certainly, we still have some plans to push some things from this record too, you know, for sure. Um, Adam, you want to add to that? Yeah, yeah. yeah we, we still got a couple still a couple stones left unturned with this one uh, yeah. but at the same time um you know you, it, it's kind of weird you know because like the world is sort of hearing these songs for the first time and we've been hearing them for like three damn years you know <laughs> like <laughs> true but like but we are moving forward man and like so yeah. we're gonna finish up a few things or a couple things with alpha uh yeah. get get that done but then get hopefully you know get back to memphis or get back to where get the get some more new stuff out there man maybe another be a single down the road who knows you know what i mean yeah. but we got a we got a lot of cool stuff that we're working on for sure behind the scenes is musically well now when it comes to releasing that's the thing too like you know you just talk about singles you know and that's the other thing it's a lot of you know in the, in the past obviously you waited two three years or so release a new record but nowadays it's like because music's consumed so fast and sort of forgotten very fast you know once people listen to it like you said i mean you i you know it's still new for a lot of fans out there but you guys been chewing on the stuff for a few years three years or so like you said um but people you know consume it they like it listen to it a bunch of times okay and they move on to the next thing because you know i mean obviously there's just such a flood of music especially new music that just comes all at once it's hard to really keep people concentrated on one particular band or, or album or so forth so i yeah. guess you know, it's probably beneficial to to put out singles just so people don't forget that you're still active and you know, that's what a lot of bands are doing these days so i guess it's something you guys are that's guess, one of those yeah. nasty like nasty symptoms of social media man and i forget mm -hmm. who talking about it recently it was, it was someone uh a front man of, of, of a big name band i forget who it was but anyway talking about how it seems like everything is more content based yeah. bands are having to focus more on like putting content out there and being visible on social media and doing mm. these little tiktok videos that have nothing to do with music or anything yeah. you know you know they they do that because they feel like they have to right like you just said like you you have to have some sort of relevance you know people's attention spans these days it's oh, yeah. garbage 
certainly a weird change in landscape. But. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, no, it's, it is. It's, it's, it's just a different time. And like you said, yeah, with the TikTok videos and everything, it's just, it becomes, like you said, more about content than the actual music. And, um, so, yeah. but yeah, unfortunately, I know that is, I, I agree with that. That's one of the downfalls of the social media thing. I mean, it's good and bad, but that is one of the, <laughs> one of the cons. Still, for sure. We still believe in like physical music too, though, man. Like yeah, sort of, you know, I don't want us, I don't want us to sound like a bunch of freaking like dinosaurs and shit, <laughs> but like, you know what I mean? Like when there's still value in like, like holding something. Oh yeah. You know, having, you know a piece of music that you can go and listen to whatever, man. Like if, if the screens went black, dude, like if you have a device, you can still play that. And you know what I mean? Like there's mm -hmm. still value and tangibility in my, in our opinion, you know, the you artwork know. even, you know, like yep. you hold it in your hand and think, man, this guy from the West coast, who's an amazing artist. He took time to draw and paint this stuff. Like, mm -hmm. it, you know, it, yeah, it's easy to look at a digital thing online too and maybe think that, but to hold it in your hand is a, a whole different, you know, ball of wax. Yeah, it's 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 the whole listening experience of it. You know, it's not just, uh, you know, just put it on in here in the digital. Like you said, there's nothing like holding a physical piece to you, whether yeah, it's a vinyl. I can vinyl see it or, in the background of your stuff. Yeah. You know, you've got a lot right behind you. you know? Absolutely. Yeah, I still collect and, you know, it's, and I still encourage people to buy. You know, not only just for themselves, for the experience, because it is, you know, there's nothing like it. Um, you can't duplicate that with with any sort of, you know, stream or anything, but also so mm -hmm. that the bands can continue to to go out, you know, and, and still, you know, be relevant and be active because it's, you know, if uh, we, we, we push all the time on the show, it's like if you're not buying music, you're not supporting bands or buying T-shirts or whatever it is. You know, but I mean, you know, when bands are on the road, they can't go on the road anymore if they're not, you know, if it's going to cost them an arm and a leg and they're going to come yeah. back, you know, you know, in the blue and, and not have any, you know, and spend money just to get out there. So it's it's just something that, you know, it looks like it, it's, it's happening down where you guys are. It, it really seems like I said, it's it's that going back to the basics, as we've been talking about playing local shows, buying, you know, merchandise and buying records and just supporting you know, supporting the scene and the bands the way it used to be done. And so, yeah. I mean, it's, there's yeah. nothing like, and, and there's really, obviously there's nothing wrong with that. Like sometimes, you know what I mean? Sometimes things go off the rails and you have to go back to the basics, man. Like you have to go back to like mm -hmm. what tried and true, you know, and like what built this in the first place. And you're not, you know, I, you you could have the most talented dudes in your city, man. But if all you're doing, like like we talked about already, is just sharing stuff digitally and this and that, like what then what's it all for? You know what I mean? Nothing. You go out on a Friday or Saturday and there's no, nothing happening. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah. It, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but like I said, it's great to see that you guys are taking that old school approach. I love it. Uh, I hope you guys just keep the pedal to the middle because I'm definitely looking to hear you know hearing more music and. Uh, from you guys in the future and um but in the meantime for everybody out there you can go ahead and check out alpha the debut lp from the red mountain and um guys where should we send the viewers and listeners to keep up with the band and buy some music and merch and all that good stuff from you guys uh right now man you can go to our facebook page and we have a store on there i think i have it now where it's easily accessible um and all of our stuff is on there, you know, the, the CDs and the merch, rest of the merch. Um, that's for sure one place you can go to buy this stuff. And then, of course, we're on pretty much every social media thing, too, if streaming is your thing, you know. But we encourage you to come to a show. <laughs> yeah, man, a show. Cool. And, hey, look, dude, like, there are there are the the silver linings of digital such as you yourself yeah. man this right here the podcast hey man yeah. like this shit yeah this man shit we here. appreciate this we really do absolutely yeah. man yeah no like you said it is great i mean i would have never i've heard of you guys obviously i'm i'm out here west coast and <laughs> you guys are <laughs> in mississippi well i hope you do i mean you definitely need, i hope i really hope you guys do because i would love to check you guys out live like i said the record's great and once again for everybody out there the red mountain alpha is the record go check it out 
and Dave and uh, Adam. Thank you guys both for coming on and good luck with everything and uh, keep us posted with what's going on in the future, especially that new, uh, that uh, some news I know you got coming out soon. So we'll go ahead and push that for you once you, you get that to us. Absolutely, man. Can't Thanks wait. a to- lot, man. We appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah.